Hey VC Vinyl community. So um, some of you probably already heard about Steve Carlson and what happened uh, with his vinyl collection uh, where a large part of his house has been flooded by a spring uh, rain flood and uh, obviously thousands of records have been destroyed and uh, basically the entire collection seems to be gone. I just wanted to make another video showing some of my records but uh, before I started I just saw the the YouTube uh, video by Norman Maslow and uh, so uh, yeah this is quite shocking isn't it because um, I mean uh, Steve Carson's videos are certainly a huge inspiration to me and they are kind of videos where I yeah, try to learn a little bit from and uh, to loosen up before in front of a camera and uh, so I really like his humor and uh, find them certainly very inspiring to go on and to create my own videos and to keep doing that despite the fact that I never be as humorous and uh, as entertaining as, as Steve is. So um, yeah, so there is this uh, there's this uh, GoFundMe campaign where everybody who knows or likes Steve can chip in. Uh, I don't have a credit card, so first thing I ran to my wife and uh, borrowed hers. And uh, she was uh, glad to help, which is nice. And um, so from what I've heard, there is some uh, insurance thing going on. And uh, this will certainly help, but usually insurance money takes really a long time until uh, anything gets done and also to be honest uh, an insurance company operates under a certain monetaristic paradigm so they are not particularly keen on just handing out money so they will put their own people on the case and probably try to lower the amount as much as possible so I don't think it's very likely that you get uh, uh, the entire worth of your collection from your insurance company I'm, I don't see that happening but uh, my hope is that uh, at least it will be a substantial amount and at the same time that uh, the GoFundMe uh, operation works really well so in combination there might be some remedy to an already tragic situation now i guess uh, an incident like that uh, evokes a lot of uh, primal fears amongst all the other record collectors uh, in my case here i'm i was never particularly afraid of the water because uh, Oh, uh, that's how we chose uh, the place when we moved in here. This is quite unlikely that we will be hit by floods here. But um, my other fear in this house where we're living is uh, fire. So this large part of this building is basically made of timber. And uh, so I'm quite paranoid about that. So um, whenever we uh, travel or leave the house for a longer amount of time than just five to six hours I have a tendency just to kick out the the breakers and just kind of shut down any possibility of uh, electrical fire or whatever yeah it's um yeah it's uh it's an awful thing uh to lose a record collection no doubt about that um it's, this is the second time that I encounter something like that now uh Many years ago, um, I had m met a Czech composer. And he's quite quite successful and popular in, in the Czech Republic. He's living in Prague, and uh, he is a composer of uh, sort of modern uh, orchestral and and church music. And uh, his name is Vladimir Franz. He's a very interesting guy, and he's he's actually it's actually quite famous for his looks because he has this um, uh, passion for tattooing and his entire face is covered with tattoos and uh, he was even running uh, a couple of um, 
elections ago, he was even running for president of the Czech Republic, which was quite hilarious uh, when a guy like that appeared on television. But he's a, he's actually well known. But uh, the reason why I'm telling you is, is this because uh, I once hang out with him in a pub in, in Prague and we talked for many hours and he told me this story that a few years before that uh, an old buddy of his uh, crashed at his place for some weeks because he I think he he maybe he was homeless or he was just I don't know but um, and in the morning uh, Vladimir Franz would just get up and uh, pick up some records from his record collection and uh, go to work he was a professor at the university and he was a professor of music so uh, he always had his records with him just something like Schubert or Bela Bartok or whatever and one day this guy I don't know maybe he was he had an alcohol problem or something like that however he kind of fell asleep and lit himself on fire with a cigarette and uh, the whole place burned down and uh, the guy the guy died in that fire and but also there was this collection of like 15 or 20,000 uh, classical vinyl records that just turned into this giant uh, pile of black goo and uh well he told me he was completely traumatized by that for for years to come i mean you just don't get away from that so easily now um i'm on the i'm under the impression that uh, steve is a kind of a tough guy on the inside and he will just not allow this somehow to break him but while at this point not much can probably remedy a already shitty situation in a sense i do believe that there is the possibility to to despite all the painful aspects of it there is the possibility to turn this into a kind of a triumph of sorts because i do think that uh, we as people could be able to create something good within a overall bad situation so um yeah it's it's very awful that something like that happened it must feel really terrible but uh I deeply believe that there is a chance to turn this around and uh, um, I guess it's a bit like being a circus acrobat. It can happen that you fall from your trapeze and usually the best thing to do is just to get up as quickly as possible. and. Um, yeah, to climb up the ropes again. And uh, I really hope that this GoFundMe campaign will be a, a substantial element of that. Uh, I certainly kind of like the idea that this uh, terrible experience can somehow be turned into a fresh start and a orgiastic shopping spree of vinyl records and uh, that's something I would like to see happen. So uh, as you can hear I'm not a big at doing speeches uh, and uh, this is kind of what I wanted to uh, express about that. Of course I will put a link uh, for the campaign in the description under the video. Yeah and uh, yeah, that's kind of what I, what went through my head uh, when I found out about this. Uh, I certainly hope that uh, there is a return of Steve Carlson and uh, uh, I really hope uh, we all can make it possible. Yeah, this is all very bad and horrible, but um, I really do believe that there is a a, a kernel of light in the situation a possibility um to come back from this and um and just the idea that you can be able to you're able to just sit down and probably make a really big order of records uh so you can start again is certainly uh something that uh, uh might be helpful but enough of my rambling 
Now I don't want to show too many records right now, not because I think it would be in bad taste, but because I've already been talking uh, such a long time. So uh, I don't want to start a whole new 15 minutes segment. Um, so I will show only two records that I've been listening to um, in the last days. Um, one of them um, is uh, this uh, double album, maybe this way around. Um, so this is uh, David Sylvian and Holger Tsukai. Uh, this is how it was released on the Herbert Grönemeyer owned Greenland or Grönland label. Uh, this came out as two... Um, now this was recorded in the late 80s and came out as two different albums but as part of the same recording session and uh, in the same style. But um, the um, Grönland but the Groenland label had uh, put it together now as this double album. And uh, so uh, this is wonderful uh, mixture of ambient and fourth world music. And uh, um, quite a great music to listen to. Particularly if you kind of want to let your mind wander a little bit and soothe your mind maybe. So it's obviously mostly very calm music, uh, but also slightly a little bit dark and uh, intriguing. Now the other album is again very wonderful. Um, that's um, Alchemy, an Index of Possibilities by David Sylvian. Uh, this is a rather new reissue. So this is an album uh, David Sylvian recorded in the mid 80s. Um, this is basically a fourth world record uh, with a strong touch of ambient. Uh, it's certainly one of my favorite David Sylvian albums. This is really beautiful. I mean, this is such a free floating adventurous music. Uh, and very intriguing and uh, it's kind of great soundtrack while you go about your uh, daily life. So David Sylvian, Alchemy, an index of possibilities. Um, the amount of people playing on this record uh, or supporting him in these recordings is uh, quite hilarious. It's almost ridiculous. I mean you have Steve Jansen on it and uh, Robert Fripp, Holger Tsukai, Ryuichi Sakamoto. Um, John Hassel is playing here. Um, so um, for someone like me, this was really a must-have. Certainly one of my favorite records these days. Yeah, so uh, that's it for the moment. And uh, my thoughts go to Steve. And uh, I really hope that uh, this whole situation will uh, turn around and uh, that he will be back. Well, if not soon, then uh, certainly one day. So my bell on uh, Steve Carlson's uh, YouTube channel is activated, so when it happens, I will know. Goodbye for now.